Hey everyone, this is Pharaoh Silver, the Pharaoh of Beer Money Finance, back with another Beer Money Roundtable, and it is a very special Beer Money Roundtable here today. Uh, I'm going to talk with the uh, usual panel first, and then talk about our uh, esteemed guest today. So, um, with me in the panel today is Midnight B11. Hello. Uh, SSC Kelly. Hello, everybody. DJ Guardian. Hello, everyone. And our esteemed guest today, our special guest, the Chief Operating Officer of Atlas Reality, Mr. Manningfield. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for, uh, for the interview, by the way. Uh, it's great, uh, great to have you here. Okay, so we're going to start things off first with the most recent build update. Uh, maybe you could give us a few more details about this recent build update that has shown up um, I believe yesterday, uh, and well, yesterday, uh, by the time I published this anyway, and that is a s handful of small mini game fixes and a full racer refactor. Yeah, sure. So in this build, uh, you know, we've been listening to the community and, you know, what happens in discord and other channels and where in which we capture feedback around, you know, player experience issues with, with, uh, you know, all of our mini games have their own, some of them have some common issues. Some of them have some very specific issues to that mini game. Um, and so we have a laundry list of, of items that are in our backlog that we pick off as many of them as we can, uh, with each build. And, uh, this one has about six little mini game fixes in it, but the big one is actually something that, that we did, um, about a month ago, which is just to, was to completely rewrite and refactor uh, Racer, which we have a mini game this coming Sunday on, and we wanted to get it out before that that mini game, and uh, and what that really is addressed to, uh, to to fix is the lagging issues and making sure that when you have a perfect shift, uh, that is the optimal play versus as Tasty and others in the community have figured out that sometimes there are more optimal plays that 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 aren't aligned with the feedback you get on screen. And so um, it, it will probably take for the players that are used to the lags in, in Racer and who've uh, kind of adjusted their gameplay to uh, take advantage of those. It's going to take probably a minute or two to to get used to the new the new feel of it. But we think overall it will make the gameplay more flair, and you will not experience some of the kind of the the boomerang effects that you get sometimes uh, when a head-to-head -head matchup. And so so this is just a this is a, a release that's fully focused on on mini games. And there's more mini game fixes to come. I mean, I think the biggest one right now that we haven't yet addressed once we get this one out is uh, the matchmaking issue that's particularly at the start of a mini game where where you will try to find a connection and then it'll say you cannot make a it cannot find a match. That's actually uh, and we've been trying to figure this one out for quite some time, but we discovered uh, early this week that it's actually a Unity issue, and Uni Unity confirmed it's an issue within their matchmaking technology. Um, that doesn't mean we're shifting the blame. We use Unity, but uh, but the, what it means is that actually they have we have an open engineering ticket with them to get this resolved, and I don't know when it's going to get resolved, but uh, the good news is someday soon it will be resolved, and we can get back to uh, you know kind of building new features as opposed to addressing some of the issues in mini games. The other thing that you will see is, I don't know if you've noticed in the last build or two, that uh, <clears throat> there was some of the, the way in which the green was rendering, um, or if you drove over a body of water, uh, the map just looked a little different than what it used to look like. And that was actually, uh, we, we had changed uh, the underlying technology that we used to render. Um, to render the map uh, in the experience, and we actually just set the, the layers of the priority oh. I I incorrectly, and so we've adjusted that priority. So, it, so in the next build, when you update, it should look like it used to look. Um, so that's that's what's contained in this build. Hey, going back to the mini games, um, Manning, just one the biggest one that I see that people seem to complain about, and it's odd because I think it's one of your most popular um, mini games is the racer. It yep. seems to be the most laggy one, and yep. I, but I wonder how much of that is even fixable on your end. It seems to me that's a game that is awful, depend, oh. awfully dependent on the the end user, like my connection and you know my lag on my end. 
how much of that it really is fixable? Matchmaking, I get, and you're going to have that fixed. But as far as like some of the lag and stuff that we experience as players, can you speak yeah. to that at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't give you a percentage of how much we can fix versus, uh, you know, and that's a very astute observation around the connection issues. Um, and, uh, you know, I couldn't give you the, the percentage mix, but but the, what we've done in the refactoring will address at least a vast majority of the issues that are controllable by 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 us and and, and the software itself. Yeah, I'm going to actually put a note there that um, a lot of that can be down to the user's connection, too. Uh, when I yeah. lived at my apartment in Kannapolis, I was barely able to crack top 100 in Racer. But now that I've moved into my new house over here, um, I'm consistently getting top 25. Connection does matter quite a bit. It, it absolutely matters. And and if you have a stronger connection versus whoever you get kind of matched with, and, and, and as the game progresses, you know, the, the games use skill-based matchmaking. So we are aligning people with people that are in similar kind of win buckets as you get further into the minigame. And so if you have an advantage versus someone who's got the same kind of uh, <clears throat> skill base as you, you will likely uh, win because of your connection. And we have no ability to control that, uh, whether you're on Wi-Fi or cellular or the strength of your cellular connection or the strength of your Wi-Fi connection. So, um, so that's a factor we can control, but there are things in the software that we can continue to improve upon, and that's just what we shipped in the build. All right. Um, uh, I, I guess since we're in the topic of mini games, uh, might as well talk about: uh, Are there any future mini games planned to be added for Atlas Earth? Short term, medium term, long term? Yeah. No, it's a great question. Um, in the short term, th the answer is no. We are very much focused on delivering, you know, the big feature we're working on right now is our um, challenges and premium awards, which we anticipate to happen in, call it early November. We're deep into QA with that right now, so it might go faster, but we're going we're gonna to communicate in November, and if it happens sooner, that's great. But, uh, but then we're going to move on to, and, and I will update the roadmap, we will update the roadmap after we ship that feature. Um, and give you kind of another four to six month view, which is what we did last time. And that's kind of how we're going to continue to operate on the roadmaps. And the way to think about what we're going to communicate on roadmaps is we're going to say, here's the next tranche of, of, of uh, here's the next tranche of countries we're going to, we're going to launch in because we're going to do roughly one or two a month. Um, here's the next big feature because it takes us, you know, call it four to six months to do a big feature. Here's the next big feature. And then here's, uh, you know, three or four either quality of life or things that we're going to do to improve uh, the player experience. And, and that's the way that we think about planning and delivering our software. So, so in the next tranche, there is no mini game schedule now, uh, as far as uh, creation of a new mini game. Right now, we want to make sure the ones that we have, uh, we're proud of the quality, and, and there's still more work to do there. Um, but but as we uh, as we kind of get past the next big kind of set of features, there's likely to be some some new mini games. But those new mini games are more likely not to be player versus player skill based uh, matches like we do now. They're likely to be a completely different genre of mini game to drive a different demographic potentially and a different psychographic uh, to engage in the game. That's exciting. That's exciting to hear. I got just a question for you, Manny, on mini games. What how big of a deal is it from your perspective, is our mini games? I mean, are we talking like a small percentage of your players that even participate in these things, or is it just mostly those of us on Discord that are con constantly ragging you about, uh, on you about it? <laughs> well, no. Um, listen, we uh, so uh, so the percentage of of daily active users are, that participate in any mini game event um, is you know usually averages between eight and ten percent. Um, of daily active users. So, so when you compare that to uh, a, a feature that like a login streak, a login streak on an average basis has about 70% of DAU participate in that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. When you, when you have a feature like arcade, actually, I'm not going to communicate exactly what that DAU uh, participation is, but it's higher than mini games. And so uh, mini games are not necessarily a large driver of engagement, but when you look at the profile of the player that plays minigames, 
Um, they are our most passionate players. Um, the, the, not all of them are what we call whales, but they are all deeply engaged. And you see people like Arn and Mr. Everything and you know Mark Cuban and some of those players always at the top of the leaderboards. And that's a huge uh, AB earning engine for them. Um, and uh, and it fuels their gameplay. And so so we we don't discredit or discount the mini games. Um, and we're so very focused on getting those to a high degree of quality. But I don't know if we're ever going to have mini games be, you know, fifty percent participation of DAU. Nor is that a goal of ours. What we want is a diverse game where there's a bunch of different things to do. Um, this is just one of those things, and uh, you know, and we're happy with that. I honestly find the mini games uh, quite interesting myself, uh, even though I haven't been able to participate in them as much recently. Uh, they're definitely an integral part of Atlas Earth. Um, and I'm really glad that you guys have it, honestly. Don't you think so, Kelly? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It makes it, it makes it um, really fun, interesting, and and ever since they came out with that schedule in the app, yeah, it's, oh, it, yeah. that is incredible. So that oh, way, yeah. I I love racer is my favorite. I also like golf. I'll do fishing once in a while, but I'm looking yeah. at that event and I'm picking out and I'm actually planning my weeks around. All right. Racers on this day, this day, I'm going to make sure I'm available for it. Yeah. You know, who came up with thing. that idea anyways, Manning, uh, the, uh, the, um, yeah. event thing. <laughs> I mean, it, it was kind of, um, it, I mean, it came from our product team. Um, and you know, as we're thinking about the, the user experience and the player experience and, you know, Part of it is the information architecture and, and what's the most valuable piece of information you give a player and and frankly, like what's next and what to get excited about uh, was not present enough in the app. And we had to use, uh, you know, kind of more archaic ways in which to communicate minigame schedules through Discord and Reddit and, 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 and which is, right. which is great. But if you look at our official Discord and you look at even our daily active um, Reddit uniques, you know, it's a very, very small percentage of our player base. And so actually... Uh, the 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 players that aren't engaged in those channels would just kind of haphazardly stumble ac across, um, you know, kind of when we had a mini game, and that just doesn't necessarily drive the best player experience. So 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 we like that um, because it allows us to communicate what's what's coming and have players like just as you said, Sean, like have players plan for the things that are coming. And and right now it's only contains uh super rent boosts and our mini game events and that's primarily because that 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 uh tab is powered by our, our bespoke uh event system that we built to manage all of these things so there are other things that happen like the arcade boost which one is going to start tomorrow we just ran a, a an amp boost for the us uh, a only players yesterday or things like maintenance windows aren't yet in that in, in that experience because they're not in that system but we are working on that also one of the things that we want to continue to expand upon there is, and we look to Reddit and Discord, and more, this one's more of a Reddit kind of inspired feature, which is like making sure that we've got history and results there so that, you know, after that pop-up goes goes away in the game that, you know, we see people make these posts in Reddit so that they can look at them um, and like preserving that history at least for a couple of weeks so that you could see how I did and where I, where I was on the leaderboard and who won. You know, we're going to add that history into that events tab as well. And and then the other thing, too, is like when an event is active, it disappears. And, you know, we don't totally love that. Um, so we're going to add that, too. So so that is going to be, you know, a, a robust way in which we communicate all of the cool stuff happening. And when we get to um, down the road, features like landmarks and how we do that and how we do auctions, which are coming. I know we've said they've been coming soon for a long time, but I can assure you we're actively working on them right now. Um, is that, you know, that's the way in which uh, a player would discover when those things are, are going to happen as well. Landmarks, when? Yeah, <laughs> that was actually going to be coming soon. <laughs> that was going to be a question. That was going to well, be a question I, that was on I the uh... say, listen, listen uh, you know, there's a plus or minus three months, but I, I would say, you know, call, think about, you know, St. Patrick's Day next year, and that's when we'll have it. <clears throat> All right. What about I, that other announcement that you made yesterday, that uh, one on Explorers Club? I, I personally loved it. Because I, um, I think it, I, I'm, I was surprised that we were able to take advantage of your Explorers Club the way we were able to be able to join on day 90, grab that day 90 streak, and then you know do the things that we were able to do. I thought it should came came out where it reset. You get so you took that away from us, but then you gave us something uh, which I thought was really cool. Oh yeah, please yeah, do uh, please do explain this one, Manning. Actually, I was it was, uh, it was on my question bank. Sorry, David. <laughs> yeah. No. 
Listen, listen. I, <laughs> well, when you design something, you, m number one, may not have thought through all of the ways in which people might use it, um, which is great because, uh, you know, you can learn... You can learn a value, you know, a ton of information from players who use your product, uh, even if it's not necessarily the way it was intended to be used. But you can learn a ton from those players. And so, when, when we started to see, and and it's a very small percentage of, of players that buy at thirty, sixty, and ninety to take it and then cancel, because um, it was always intended to be, you know, a ninety-day subscription, um, or maybe even longer. That like you fully go through the whole ninety days and you get the big payout at the end. And, and you know, we didn't really imagine that that people would have used it this way and so uh we had let it happen for a long time it's it's not like it was you know devastating financially to to us but but it was just like well, well gosh that's not really what it's supposed to do um and so as we thought about well how do we address it and how do we get it to to operate the way in which you know we intended it to uh we we were also sensitive to the fact that we for some players, we're, we're taking something away, and we just never, uh, we never really want to, you know, take something away or or devalue an experience without having some type of offset or, in some cases, some type of an upgrade. Um, and so we we actually have two upgrades that are happening. One we communicated yesterday. Another one I'm not going to yet communicate, but it's coming. Um, and and so you know, one of the most common requests that we get um, from our community is, hey, can I just like stack my boosts for eight hours instead of six or, or, or a longer period of time. Um, and so we went back and we we looked at it, we did the math, what the impl implications were, and, and some of the implications we think about are, you know, CPMs on advertising degrades, you know, after a certain kind of point with a player. And so the, the marginal uh, revenue to pay for the boost kind of degrades uh, after you reach a certain kind of number of impressions per day. So like we look at that kind of math and we're very mathematically oriented, uh, you know, as I know your community is as well. But um, so we looked at that and we said, you know, like relative to what these players are, are, are paying us to be members of Explorer Club, like it, it, it the math just worked. Um, and so, so we were happy to, to share that on October 1st, you know, any Explorer Club subscriber will get eight hours boost, not only for Super Rent boost, but for all of the boosts. And so I think that's a, it's a, it's a good quality of life benefit for players who subscribe and gives a reason and a point of differentiation of what uh, a subscriber gets versus what a subscriber uh, or non-subscriber would get. Love that's it. A, yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. I actually want to. Uh, I actually was originally going to take this from a fifty thousand foot view in the interview, so I'm actually going to take it up to the fifty thousand foot view here, if that's okay with y'all. Um, uh, talk about uh, Manning himself for a little bit. Uh, a couple friends of mine had a, had noticed your record, Manning, and mentioned that you've got pretty distinguished record for someone who's in the rewards app community. Uh, director at Chase Bank, C suite executive at Acorns, and. You know, I've been asking, you know, why Atlas Reality? Yeah, how did you land at Atlas Earth with your track record? Yeah, well, well, first, um, thank you for the the compliments. Um, I appreciate, you know, uh, you know, I, <laughs> the thing you didn't say is this means meaning you're old because you've been doing this for a long time, which is also I mean, true. I, I, I mean, let's just, I mean, let's just say I'll, I'll say like this: like I've seen like other rewards apps out there, Benjamin Bridge, Free Cash, being like top tier on that, and not that there isn't a person I know that has created this that has the record that you have, basically. Oh well, well. Thank you. I've been I've been fortunate in my career to you know like many to have just gotten a few lucky breaks. But uh, but I but I kind of grew up at JP Morgan Chase uh, in the card business and in the loyalty business there, and so you know had the good fortune to to work on some of the biggest card products out there. And I created Chase Sapphire and I ran Chase Ultimate Rewards for uh, four plus years, and so it gave me a lot of insight into how people. And how consumers think about rewards, what motivates them. So understood, I you know created Chase Freedom as well, and so which is a, a big cash back proposition. And so understand the economics of of, of that, the, and also more importantly, the psychology of of a of a customer who is motivated by points and, and rewards and things like that. And so. Uh, I then made the transition over to, to Acorns. I left the bank uh, about eight years ago, but made the transition over to Acorns as COO there. And um, and actually, that's where I met Sami. 
who is uh, the CEO of Atlas. Yep. And so Sami worked for me. And um, and he was running growth for uh, for Acorns. And Sami's, you know, a very creative and dynamic, probably one of the most interesting people I've ever met and, and inspiring kind of leaders and marketers and innovators out there. And so, you know, he uh, when he he was always working on gaming and trying to figure out and he wanted to he wanted to he wanted to own a game studio and that's what he really wanted to do and i said i said well listen whenever you're ready to go i would i would love to love to invest in whatever it is you do because i don't know anything about gaming but i i know that you're going to be successful and so he left and and i um i got involved in atlas at that point as an investor so i i wrote him you know a relatively small check but i i helped I helped uh, more, more so just because I believed in him. And then, uh, you know, and then I, I stayed at, at the Acorns for a long time. I went and started something else that failed. But, uh, but as, I was, uh, as I was thinking about what was next, uh, actually, I got a, 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 an email from Sami, and he sends out a quarterly email to all of the investors just saying, here's where the business is going. And this was a little over a year ago. And, it, and basically, he... Uh, I was just talking to him about the business and, and Sami and I are, 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 you know, like, you know, we're friends too. And so, and uh, as the more he really dug in, I had read these emails before, but I just didn't really pay that much attention. And, and as the more I dug in, I was like, you know, do you, do you mind if I come work on this with you? <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and thankfully he said yes. And so I joined last August. Actually, I joined, I think, the day that AEC launched, um, or Explorer Club. Sorry, that's what we call it internally. But actually, Atlas Explorer Club launched. Um, and, uh, and I've been at the company since then trying to help, you know, mostly originally focused on kind of uh, building our product development process and I'm very analytically oriented. And so building out our analytics stack and, and uh, just over the last three or four months kind of took over customer support. Cause I did that uh, when I was at Acorns as well. And then, um, and then just sort of started to get engaged in the community because I was feeling like we as a company, though we listen to our players and we're very player centric, we, we didn't necessarily have a deeper understanding of how they think about things and which is why, I personally have gotten involved in the community and, and that's why I'm sitting here talking to you guys is because I'm trying to understand how you think. I'm trying to listen to what it is that you need and make sure that, that you know, at the company, I can represent that back to the team to make sure that where we're going is aligned with what's going to work. Um, I have noticed too, now that you mentioned it, that Atlas Earth has had a lot more hype around it right around the time you started as COO maybe a month or two after. And I was just wondering, because I, I've been in a member of Atlas Earth since uh, January of 2022. Um, I know Midnight was there also for the early days, and we know how the app was before. And we were just wondering, um, you walking in your first day, week, month with Atlas Reality and seeing this game for the first time, what things did you feel like from the start that, that you feel like that you've uh, that that you would have done different that you that you had improved at to this point um, compared to back then when you first saw it back in August of last year. Hmm. Well, it's a great question. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure. I personally have done very much around that, or will I take credit for anything other than other than you know for those who've been around for a while, you know, <clears throat> call it late 2022 early 2023 you know the game had real stability issues um and that was really just a function of that was really just a function of too much growth and you, you know when you when you when you start a, a when you build a piece of software you build a product uh you make it you make a ton of shortcuts uh that are incredibly important to get out the gate and, and start this thing but if you have any type of success, you end up hating every single one of those decisions. And by the way, every startup goes through this. You hate every single one of those decisions, and um, <laughs> you have to go rebuild a bunch of things. You know, you, you've got you, you you typically start with a monolithic backend. You hate that. You hate the architecture of everything you've done. Those are all like rational decisions when you're small. But then, as you try to go from small to medium to large, like you have to unwind a bunch of things. And so. The team, and this is long before I got there, the team has had been going through this process of basically rebuilding the entire back end and the, the, the infrastructure in the game, which was a huge uh, 
a huge impediment to growth, a huge impediment to new feature development. And so there was this period where just a lot of, there just didn't seem to be, I would, I would imagine from a player's perspective, didn't seem to be a ton of, a ton of new things happening. Um, and that started to unlock last summer, right before I got there. And then over the course of the, uh, you know, pretty much all the way through to the, the big map update that we did in March of this year, like, that was, we still have some more infrastructure things to do, but like that was, that was all of that and everything that's happened since this past March has been unlocked by that hard work that the team did over the prior 18 months. Okay. So the, the business challenge was like, how do you keep this thing going and how do you keep players motivated while knowing that there's not a, a ton of new things coming because you have to, you have to rework the infrastructure in order to really scale. Well, that's what really made the difference for for me as an end user. I love Atlas Earth before, but you when you came on board, especially when you came onto the Discord and started that open communication with us as players, for me this game just took off. It gave me the confidence, and I know David can speak to this too. I I had the confidence in Atlas Earth was not only going to be around for the short term, but was also looking at growth, and it was going to be around for, around for a while. And then when you started feeding us these little tidbits of what's coming up down down the road, it just got me as an end user really excited as a player. Wouldn't you agree, David? Yeah, I agree. I also had to mention. Uh, yeah, um, I had to mention too. I had to apologize to people who hear the traffic in the area as well. You guys know the drill with beer money roundtable, and this one's no different. I'm sorry, uh, it's, but but yeah, I definitely agree with that. I will say that um, the one thing that kind of gets people uh, that I, I try to get people in Tatlas Earth, they keep asking me like, "Is it a game? Is this a rewards app? Is it something you make money on?" I mean, like, how would you describe Atlas Earth, Manning? I mean, uh, you're asking me, or would you? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a game, full, and it's entertainment, and I, like, that's both, like, uh, that's both, like, my direct answer, but that's also my, my legal answer. Yes. <laughs> um, it is a game. This is not a security. This is not a, uh, you know, this is not an FDIC-insured, uh, you know, kind of, you know, account that's, it is just, it's not a banking product and, right. and, and, or a savings product. And I think that's, that's a really important thing to understand, not only because of the legalities of that, but I think, I think people need to, need, need to appropriately think about this in their financial like life. Like um, it is a game and, and, and you have to keep it in, in, the, in that bucket. If you think about it, something, if this is your retirement plan, like, I, like I, we would strongly encourage you to not think about it that way. You think this game gets treated a little unfairly? Because I see comments, and it makes me cringe when I see them on Facebook or Reddit, that people try to treat this as an investment app when it is just a game. And these are the same people that probably go out and buy Candy Crush, okay? This is still a game that I can spend money on, but at least this one gives me a little something back. So, I mean, you think that sometimes we, you guys get treated a little unfairly because of that perception that, oh, I got to get a return on investment with this app? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know if we get treated unfairly. Uh, you know, I've got pretty thick skin myself. So, but but I I I, I just want to you know, someone who's a licensed securities professional uh, and an investment advisor myself, like like this is I would never advise a client to ever do this uh, beyond the view of this is a, this is entertainment. Um, and if you look at the the psychographic profiles and the way in which people play the game, and this is the thing I say in the Discord a lot, um, is like not everybody plays for the same reason that you might be playing. Um, oh. and, and and so we try to we we try to encourage that diversity of gameplay. I mean, if I look at the way that I play versus the way that probably many of you play, you'd be like, man, dude, you're not you're not a very good player. And and you know, I might not be, but I I play the way that I like to play, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and and so, uh, you know, it, it, the things that make me cringe are, are, are when people attack our team, like that 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 one I don't really have any time for. But uh, but you know, all the other feedback is is in some cases people venting uh, about something else going on in their life that has nothing to do with us. So I want to get some questions as well in from DJ or Midnight if they have any regarding anything we've talked about up to this point as well. Just wanted to make sure that you guys have your, uh, have your say as well. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, going back to communication a little bit, um, things such as the text and app notifications, if there was, because uh, I noticed a lot of times those are usually late. Sometimes I get the text for like maybe an SRB 30 minutes late. Yeah. Um, and I know you've added the in-game schedules, which I think have really helped. Um, but for a, a different demographic of people who maybe rely on those little reminders, if there's any update on if those are getting any changes. Yeah, well, so for the techs and the pushes, those are <clears throat> those are essentially rate limited, um, and not by our providers. I mean, so for techs, we use uh, we use Twilio for techs, um, which pretty much everybody uses Twilio. Uh, you know, but we, we we have software that allows us to manage deliverability um, and making sure we don't show up on spam lists and making sure that we've got you know something that doesn't necessarily blow up the app. <clears throat> so we don't push every SMS all at once because of every single player logged in at once. And I'm not saying we would fall over, but it would be stressful. <laughs> so so that is very intentional, the way in which we do that. So I, I, I think I wouldn't expect any changes there. That is that is really optimized for stability. Gotcha. All right. Um, all right. Yes. Uh, I wanted to expand on that if I might. Go for it. Hello, Maud Manning. Um, welcome. Uh, it's an honor to have you here. As uh, Farrah mentioned earlier, I just want you to know I am a little bit more of a late uh, player. I, I joined um, earlier this year. And uh, so my, my perspective might be on, you know, someone who's still kind of new to the game. However, I do appreciate the fact that you are around to answer questions. You have a server where people can go and they can actually ask questions. Uh, so some apps don't do that, especially uh, reward apps. Sometimes that's not available. Uh, there are great apps out there, but you know they don't have such personal communication level. You know, so it's easier to listen to people when you're actually there and you're actually watching chat and you're actually watching what people are saying. So I want to say I appreciate that because time is very valuable nowadays for sure. Uh, always valuable. Uh, I wanted to go back to the matching algorithm that you were talking about. Well, I don't know if you mentioned algorithm, but that is part of it. So unless you were talking about matching with mini games, yep. uh, an algorithm helps with that. So if you want help with that in the future, let me know. I do know some information and in how that's done and, and some uh, experience I've had doing things like that in the past and what companies use algorithms to help with matching. Oh, well, great. That's great to know. And, and uh, nice to meet you. And, and thank you for being a player. And uh, thank you for the commentary. And, and thank you for the, uh, you know, thank you for the offer. <clears throat> also, um, I love art. And I really appreciate how well they're doing with the legendary art. It's very pretty. It's very nicely done. So I want to commend the artists. <laughs> That's the most controversial topic we've had <laughs> this year. <laughs> oh, with the art? Seriously? The, not the art. The no, not the art. Thing? For the price point. <laughs> oh, the price point. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. Actually, uh, actually, this wasn't on my bank, but I might as well ask. How did you come up with twenty five hundred? Uh, we spun a wheel, just like in the game. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. no we are. Um, I mean, we are very mathematical about how we do things, um, right. and. You know, we have, you know, so it's like when we go create a boost table, when we go to a new country, you know, the first thing we look at is what is the advertising CPM or cost per thousand. Um, that drives where the breakpoints are on boost rates, and that drives everything. Um, and so when we take, a, well, how do you price a perpetual legendary upgrade? Um, and what is the economic impact over decades of what that will do to virtual rent? And then how do you convert that back into some discount rate and some calculation on, on what the AB value is? You know, it, that number is is not that different. You know, there's some margin built in there, but that number is not that different than, than where we landed. And so um, the other thing, too, is, is uh, you know, right now the only price discovery on a legendary parcel is available in the secondary market. And that secondary market is not that liquid and it's not that public for people to look at. And so we needed to establish the price of, of what a legendary parcel upgrade is worth. And so that's why we chose that number. 
Uh, okay. I went from art. To, we went from art to the price. <laughs> all, right. listen, all I would say is not, not everyone is like like <laughs> rational about things they buy in their lives. <laughs> hey, I, all I'm saying is I can't wait to see the Winter Wonderland one. I'm just saying. Yeah, I listen. <laughs> I think the next, the next. Yeah, you know, we're we're entering what I would call the fun season for this yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. He answered my question there. <laughs> I was going to ask about holidays. <laughs> yes. Yes. They're coming. Okay. okay. So um, I'm going to move into a topic here that I'm sure a lot of uh, my own uh, channel mates would love to talk about because some of them have, don't have Atlas Earth yet, or at least it's not, it it's, might be available, but they're not able to buy parcels yet. And I know it's available in 12 countries at this point. Um. Of the countries that are not announced, which ones do you think where it's inevitable that they're going to open up eventually? Here, I'll break some news here. I'll okay. tell you something. I'll tell you, because uh, I appreciate, you know, the, the engagement uh, here in, in, in our community and in your community and the, <laughs> and the Venn diagram of those overlaps. But, uh, you know, if you think about, so what, what we've announced through is, I can't remember if it's South Korea or Japan, but I, I think we've announced through Japan. Um, which is really the last thing that we're going to do this year before we all disappear for Christmas. Right. Um, we're going to come back at the beginning of the year and we're going to do Brazil. So that'll be our first South American country. And that, that one is, you know, and, and, and for us, you know, the way that we think about this is not only, you know, yes, we go to English speaking countries first because we haven't figured out multi-language and then we go to Mexico because it's in, you know, it's adjacent to us, but it also gives us an indication of, of adoption in Spanish speaking market, or in some cases, a lower CPM market, which Mexico is. Mexico is doing fantastic. Um, then we go over to the continent in Europe and try to try, you know, we started, we just did January, or sorry, we just did Germany. We're gonna do France France in, in early October. Um, that gives us uh, an indication of how we can work within Europe. Um, and then we need to go understand uh, Asia, which is why we chose both South Korea and Japan. Um, those are big markets. Those are highly gaming centric markets and a signal uh, around adoption there will give us confidence about, uh, you know, pursuing the rest of Asia. Um, and then we need then that's just why we're going to Brazil, because it gives us Latin America and, and success in Brazil. And, you know, every 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 person in the gaming industry has told us, like, don't go to Mexico. Don't go to the don't go to some of these other countries because you're not going to you're not going to be able to make it work. And I can just tell you confidently we're making Mexico work very well right now. And we're excited to see what happens. Germany is going really well. South Africa is like totally crushing it in a way that we didn't expect. Um, but uh, and so we're excited to see what happens in, in Brazil because it'll give us a sense of where we sit in Latin America. And so then from there, we're going to start to fill in the rest of the uh, rest of the map by going to places like the Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland. So it gives you kind of that part of of Europe. Um, then we're going to go start to fill out more of Europe and Spain and Italy. Then we're going to make our first foray into the Middle East, where we go to the UAE and Saudi Arabia. We're going to come back to Europe and go to Portland, Belgium, Switzerland, Austria. Then we're going to go back to Asia and Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines. And then we're not quite sure. India is the next big test, but like India is, is likely the, the thing to tackle after that. So that's, I just shared a lot. But um, I but think I just counted over 25 by the time yes. that, that whole list is done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but we've we've gotten and, and and you know all the infrastructure work that we did uh, you know, to get the the U.S. map remade and the new boundaries drawn uh, in March, like also unlocked the ability to go create new maps and do it in a way that essentially we're doing a, a country a month, um, in some cases more than one country a month, and and so you know we're in the process of mapping South Korea right. We're fully done with France. We're pretty much ready to go. We just need to put the language localization in, in the, the mobile clients. Um, in South Korea, we're underway. We picked our font, our, our Asian font, because we had to pick a new font for Asian characters um, yesterday. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, doing the map is actually the hard part and just like making sure the boundaries are coherent um, and, and work for locals. Um, but uh but yeah, the, 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 the international growth side of things uh, from a technical standpoint is is not the most challenging thing that we have to do. Oh, so I just I, I didn't realize that the font didn't have uh, it only had alphanumeric. 
because I yeah. use the same font. I I asked support a long time ago about it. Um, oh, lucky, luckiest guy. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yes. Yeah, uh, it just does. I mean, it, it does, but it's so thin. It doesn't when you render it in. Um, yeah, when you, it, you when you render it in in the game, it, it doesn't. You know, and and you don't. You can communicate a lot. I, I speak Chinese and can read uh, Chinese, and so like you can communicate a lot with just a couple characters, and so you don't you know for buttons and things like that like we needed something thicker and something that like really thought about the characters and so so and this is a pretty normal game design issue that people have to deal with and so yeah you need to change the font for just for asian characters uh i okay there is actually another question that has been asked and i'm probably going to go through these last two questions see if kelly has anything dj or midnight and then i'll go to the uh uh, the community as well, the Beer Money Engine community, and they actually have a few questions for you as well. Uh, so, uh, for um, th there's been a lot of issues going on regarding like governors and presidents dominating, and I know there's been a huge bunch of suggestions asking, "Hey, can we have vice president? Can we have lieutenant governor? Would there be any plans to eventually have a vice president, lieutenant governor title, lieutenant mayor title anytime in the future?" I would say, and, and, and I think people have heard me answer versions of this before, but so the thing that you have to think about this is, you know, and, and I would say some people think um, the game as being a very well whale dominant game. And, and I can just tell you this game isn't, you know, relative to many other the game kind of designers that I've, I've met and talked to as I've, gotten more involved in, in that part of the community. I mean, we're roughly 5% uh, of revenue is, is whales. So it's not actually, that's, most games are way more than 20 plus percent whale driven. Um, so we're not, and, and we define a whale in our game as if you spent more than $5,000 in outside money. So that's either buying packs or using AEC. I and will so, start using that for my optimal strategy guide, fifth edition. I will do that. Yes, there you go. There you go. And yes. so that's, I mean, this is internally how we think about it, but um, <clears throat> So, so it's just not a huge part of our game, but these players have put some money into the game, and and, and obviously five thousand dollars is real money. Um, and so, badge income is one of the primary motivations, not the only one, but one of the primary motivations for why someone would choose to put that kind of money into the game. And so, any type of devaluing of that for them is just counter to how we would think about ethically anything in the game. We don't want to devalue anything. This is why we have boost tables. This is why we do all these things that so we never have to devalue. So if we got to a place where badge income would need to be shared, the question I always ask people, and I haven't heard a good answer yet, is like, where does the money come from? <laughs> do we take right. it away from the president? Like, I, like, I can tell you we're not going to do that, like, period. Um, so then the, 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 then, so then it's like, well, where do you, is Atlas Bucks just going to, is Atlas just going to fund that? No, we're business. Um, we, we, and typically the way we think about this is like when we get paid, you get paid. When you get, when you get an arcade reward, we're getting paid and then we share that with you. So, so like, this isn't like the U S government. We just go print money. Like, so it's got to come from somewhere. And so I, you know, until someone solves that problem for us and we're not thinking about it back at the shop, like this is not going to happen. Um, actually, I have noticed that you guys do get a lot of your money from uh, a lot of money from sponsors and like the offer walls that you've had, like with CPX research and all that. And actually, yep. uh, this is a question that I was originally going to save it for the community Q and A. Uh, Christopher McCarran had asked this one, and I'm going to go ahead and feature this one because it's a topic that uh, I've talked about pretty recently. It's a topic that has been discussed in the Beer Money Network quite a bit too, and a lot of people have been uh, angry at me about in the past. Uh, and that is involving like you guys don't get your money the same way a lot of the other games in the Web3 universe do, like Upland or uh, Illuvium or Decentraland. Uh, the, you guys don't have a crypto token. You guys seem to get the money from like sponsors and all that. Um, and I know that they were talking about Web3 crypto uh, adoption early on, but it seems like talk about that has uh, died out recently. Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, we deeply respect the crypto industry mm -hmm. um, and we fully intend to have crypto. You know, it's in our redemption, rent, virtual rent redemption flow, right. you know, that come, coming soon. Like, right. 
that will happen. Right. It's not happening this year, but that will happen. But getting deeper into crypto inside of the game is not necessarily where our heads are at right now. Um, and, and, you know, and it's not necessarily, I would call it a strategic reason, but it's more, you know, we try to take understood things, both from the business side and from the player side, and introduce them to the game in a logical way. So we, you know, the people travel. So, okay, so you can, and, and we try to create these earning mechanisms um, to help people get more AB because people love the Atlas Bucks. And so that's why we do travel. That's why we do surveys. That's why we do, that's why we introduced Arcade. Um, and, and those have been wildly successful. Uh, because people love the currency. I mean, it, like the thing that that has just become clear to me as someone who comes from the loyalty business, I'm just like, damn, this is the most addictive currency I have ever seen. And I look at the numbers and I look at the engagement and I look at all of these things. It's like, like people can't get enough AB. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so we think about we think of and, and you know it's core to the game loop, which is like I turn AB into buying land or badges, and that turns into rent. Um, and, and that like that's the core game loop, and so it's fuel to to the way in which players engage in our game. And so we think about ways in which we can earn more AB. Uh, you know, we get some sometimes a little sideways with like interesting Web three things that like I don't know are unproven, and it just like. Like we prefer to work with more proven things and more behaviors that are natural to players uh, than than introduce new behaviors and new concepts that that aren't um, that that in some cases are difficult to explain. So so that doesn't mean we'll, we won't ever do it, but like we're probably not going to be on the bleeding edge of that ever. Okay. Um, I just had one comment, if that's okay, um, yeah, with regards to crypto, because um, I have been researching it. And following a lot on the news and following a lot with the um, what's going on with that market. And I do agree that you want something that's a little more on the stability side. And right now, I would not call that so stable. So there's been a lot of up and down with regards to value, uh, with regards to crypto. So that makes a lot of sense in that case. You want something that somebody's going to feel comfortable about, something somebody's used to, and something somebody knows is the value isn't going to keep going up and down almost on a daily basis at this point. Yeah, I mean there's something magical about logging in and looking looking at your at your home screen and the virtual rent ticker is always moving up. Like there is that is like not only a rational thing, but that is an emotional thing. And exactly. Because you want to feel like I'm always making progress. And so yes. so um, market swings is not a thing, you know, that doesn't mean like down the road we are going to have the ability for people to to redeem into crypto. We're you know part of our our vision is is to have stock trading uh, in there as well, um, which which is you know we communicate that in the redemption flow is coming soon. Like I've I've run a brokerage before, I've run an investment advisory before, so you know that's part of one of the reasons why I'm here to help make that happen someday. That but right, that, and as that, an investor, I totally get that. Yeah, but you do want some stability and. When you are investing, whether it's in a game or something that's not a game, uh, some yeah. people see it as both. Uh, some people see it as an option to make money on a game. You can, and you know, you can do free to play, or you can play it for fun. And one reason why the legendary aspect, you know, with the beautiful aesthetics, and I really do think that they're doing a great job on this. I just wanted to give the uh, artist some credit, you know, because I don't think they get enough sometimes. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> this for people who. They're like, I have everything else on here. I have, I'm a whale already. I have so many plots. I want something that's going to keep me motivated to keep using the app. And so a lot of times people don't get, that's why. It's like ordering a feast and you're thinking, well, I really have to leave, but I want to try that dessert. That's their dessert, basically. They've done everything that they possibly can to get where they are and they need something new. So that, in my opinion is why the price you know makes sense because basically these people there's there's such whales that this this helps keeps them motivated so it's yeah. a good motivator and the art is really good so yeah. i just wanted so, to say that again i appreciate that and and you know i think that's just a good signal of of not everybody plays for the same reasons and and and, and the one thing i would just likely like clarify for you and you wouldn't know this but you know, I would say, I would say the number of whales that have bought a, a legendary parcel upgrade is 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 very small. 
Um, it is it is mostly people buying it for other reasons. Uh, this is an important, you know, and, and I think you, so you sometimes see it in our Reddit where people will post, hey, I, I, uh, I bought this piece of, you know, this parcel because it was my first apartment or I bought this parcel because this is where I proposed to my, you know, my, my fiance. Uh, uh, and, and, and there's yeah. ways of people, you know, and even if you think about. Uh, Agreed. I mean, you think about the passports and the you know the passport and the badges and the passport. You know, that's a that's a that's a map of places I've been, and 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 sometimes people are very intentional about buying them because it's a memory. Or in some cases, sometimes people won't buy them because they don't want to give income to a, a player. <laughs> Maybe they don't they don't want to give income to. But well, but that's I, true. And then you uh, also have the color coding that you added to the. The, the whole thing, you know, when you buy one, you get a color coding that you didn't have before. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so that's something that people don't always know about that they're going to get, you know, the, just buy one of those and you can see exactly what's going on in that map. That was a brilliant feature. <laughs> you probably didn't even realize you were given that feature when you were designing that because you can click on it. <laughs> And you can see the rarities. The map comes up, and you can see what what rarities you have. We we've asked for that feature before, and it's like you accidentally included that. Maybe it was an accident, but with that legendary parcel feature. Well, I mean, we didn't accidentally include it. The reason why we included it is because we didn't want somebody to make the mistake of placing a legendary on a legendary. Like it, it's a, like a very okay. practical reason why we did it that way. And actually, sure. the internal. The internal view we have on a map, uh, you know, in our system, was like like that like that. That's the internal view we have. Like that's that's that, that color coding is actually what we see. And then, you know, as we work on uh, bringing the map to the web, which which you know we have some things in in our test environment right now, that like people are going to get that view uh, without having to buy the legendary parcel upgrade. So so we're going to bring that value to the web. And you know, we think about the web as. You know, the web is 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 going to be a different experience than than the mobile game. I mean, you're never going to be able to buy land from the web um, because you need to be present. You know, from GPS, that that's never going to change in the game. But you know, uh, I think it was fa for at least for us, it was fascinating to see when we launched City Leaderboards the way in which the community reacted to that. Um, and and uh, you know, it let mayors understand who's you know kind of on their tail let other people understand and discover you know kind of where might i go to, to to get a mayorship that could be weak and and so the strategic gameplay around the map and the leaderboards and the hierarchy and the titles is really fascinating and so we're we're, we're building a, a the web experience to to be a tool for players to be more strategic about that and not necessarily rely on screenshots and in Reddit servers and or Reddit uh, subs and, and Discord servers to understand where should they go. So you basically created a legend uh, for parcel uh, parcels when you did that, so you know which color does uh, is which parcel. Uh, yeah. So you have the legendary, you have the epic, the, and then you so you able to see because you have a built-in legend with that with that factory. All you have to do is is buy one of those to get that. So in my opinion, that's pretty priceless because then you don't have to be concerned about making a mistake. So yeah, that's definitely something that was pretty brilliant um, to include. Oh, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, moving on here to uh, I do know that uh, going through uh, Mister Everything's interview. Uh, the next major feature for Atlas Earth is upcoming challenges and premium rewards. Is yes, yeah. Uh, could you uh, discuss a little bit more about? Uh, could you like explain a little bit more about this to people who might not have heard about this yet? Oh, give us some juicy details, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what challenge uh, must I do? What What challenge must I do on? Uh, I'm on... excited for this. Ten push-ups. You need to turn. We're going to use the accelerometer to determine whether you're doing push-ups. No. Um, we're, we're are you taking? Are, are you taking this off a cash walks app? Because <laughs> yeah, there no, we go. We are. We are. Oh, we are no. We are. We are not. We. We have. I have zero desire ever to capture any health kit data. Um, I have zero <laughs> desire with any of that. So okay. that's. Um, but uh, but no. Uh, basically, th th this is a a, ch a rewards ladder. Um, you know, it's a mechanic that's that's pretty well understood in, in other games, and we're making it, uh, you know, ours. So making it unique to our game, unique to all the features and all the things that you can do in the game. And so, so there's going to be essentially two tracks 
There's going to be very much like uh, the login streak, where you've got a free-to-play track and you've got a pay-to-play track. There's going to be a free-to-play track where over the course of a month, and these will be monthly challenges, over the course of the month, there's going to be levels that you can unlock, and each one of these levels is going to be gated by certain activities that you do, that you participate in, or, or certain milestones that you reach, and then you will unlock A, B. So you know the, the currency that people love, you're going to be able to get more currency by doing more things inside of the game. And then uh, on the premium side of things, uh, it's going to be a $10 uh, a month or $9.99 a month uh, subscription on top of AEC if you already do that or in lieu of AEC if you don't do that. And what that's going to do is just, just like the Atlas Explorer does uh, around value, it's going to have more value. Um, and when you complete the challenge, there's going to be a prize for all, for all those that complete the challenge for both free to play and and the um, premium side of things. Um, there's going to be a nice reward at the end of that, and I'm not going to reveal what that is. And that reward is going to likely change every month, but it will be very motivating. Nice. Okay. Well, I I won't I won't ask about any specific challenges. Then I will leave that to uh, a future update. That's more videos for me, after all. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, yeah, we are, we are we are mostly done with the 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 back end part of this. We've mm -hmm. got we you know we we actually we were all together last week in New Orleans. We kind of stitched together the integration um, in person. And then now we're just in all the banging of the banging of the software to get the the QA and and issues identified before we you know, introduce it to our players. And so we're probably right now the conservative estimate would be we're six weeks away. But you know if we, things go well, we could be faster. But um, right now we're laser focused on getting this done. It's the number one thing we're done. Mm, uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, connecting with this and also noticing the inventory that was added in place of the auction tab, is Atlas Earth going to be taking on an RPG style role in the future? Or any time in the future? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily right away where we're going. I was just but, curious. But I saw the inventory. The idea, you know, the idea of, of consumables, the idea of right. personalization yeah. is very much, uh, you know, in, in line. vampires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, we have some experience in that, um, and, and uh, you know, for us, you know, it's just a matter of of uh, where it makes sense in the context of this game. That was the best thing I could come up with with regards to what he's talking about. Yeah, the you know, Atlas the Forge Empire. Of Empires is oh, like oh, uh, oh, I thought you were talking about Atlas Empires, which was their other game. Which I don't, I don't cover Atlas Empires here because, again, I'm. I'm more on the um, beer money side mm -hmm. and not on the gaming side, but yeah, they do have a second game. If you guys want to go check it out, Atlas Empires. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll check it out quickly because we're shutting it down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well then, I did not realize that. Uh, That's right. It's it's uh, no, it is it is the first game. You know, Sami went and built and Bo built a game studio. Mm -hmm. It was the first game. Atlas Earth is actually the second game that we've done, and and so we are um, we learned a lot with 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 Atlas Empires, but. Uh, we had made had to make the hard decision around focus, uh, and, and and really absolutely you know, Atlas, Atlas oh, that Earth makes is a lot of sense. Where, yeah, where the energy well. is, and and uh, you know maintaining multiple games, and you know on the technology side and the operational side is not, um, you, you know, it's not something we want to take on. We really want to focus on on Earth because of just the 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 fact that we're sitting here in this this conversation around and talking about this game is the reason why we want to focus on it. Um, well, also, you have both. You have the gaming aspect and you have the possibility to make money. So you basically have both in the one app. So the other one is a little bit more on the obsolete side now, just a little bit more. I mean, some people like to play games just to play games, but because Atlas Earth is becoming more and more both, you know, yeah. the other one isn't as, you know, essential to have, you know, on the side. But it, you know, yeah. it's still a nice idea in case people don't want to think about the other aspects, so they still have an option. But I did, I do get why you know you would move on from that. If it shows <laughs> up in the in the arcade, I'll go play it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's an idea. Well, we're not spending money to acquire into it now, so we'll show up in arcade. <laughs> <It's> micromanage. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, if you, if any of you have anything else, I'm opening the floor to the rest of the panel here before I take it to the community Q and A. I had one uh, comment I wanted to make about the. Um, okay, it's not Forge of Empires. We know that, right? But some people want to change their parcels without having to do it the legendary way. But they want to make a parcel special 
for the reasons that you mentioned earlier, like uh, for a special occasion, depending on where they are, et cetera, give them an option maybe to spend their AB once in a while on doing that rather than having to buy a legendary parcel to do that with perhaps a different price margin during a holiday season or during a special occasion uh, for Atlas Earth, like an anniversary, something like that. Yeah, so so it is very much in our in our vision to allow for some level of personalization and customization. Um, and so I'm going to speak very generally to this because, you know, I try to speak generally to things that aren't published on a roadmap, but, but you're going to start to see us move more in that direction. You obviously legendary parcel upgrades was like the first uh, step in that direction, but you will see more over the next year in that direction. And ultimately, you know, our vision is in this virtual world that is Atlas earth to, to yeah. have, you know, a, a world that, that, that can be styled by, by our players. Okay. So you're testing the waters with the legendary um, upgrades, the way that they look and everything a little bit. You want to see how people will react to the aesthetics and then et cetera, which I would definitely tell you is a good, is a good step. Uh, because, yeah, well, yeah I, people did mention that in our chat. Remember uh, Pharaoh, they mentioned in chat that they'd like to see more aesthetic options right, yeah. uh, for their parcels later. Well, I, mean, I put a tree house in, Bert, in uh, the French quarter last, last week. So <laughs> oh, there, you go. <laughs> there you go. There's an example right there. And some people also mentioned uh, for plots for their loved ones, et cetera, you know, to exactly. end your memory. Yeah. As okay, my dad's grave grave site. I'm going to put something on that at some, at some point when you come out with one that's appropriate for it. Yeah. So yeah, there's an example right there, you know, very, very important. <laughs> uh, I had a question uh, about badges. Um, so you, I know you said earlier a little bit about how people, you know, like to buy badges, you know, whether that's an emotional thing or to fill out the passport, but for people who have already uh, filled out the passport, I, I think I heard something about y'all say there's probably not going to be another tier. Um, but for people who maybe want to purchase uh, more badges, is there a possibility for uh, options of like a lower cost badge as just kind of an aesthetic kind of thing on your profile to say that you've been there instead of having to spend the full two hundred on it. Uh, it's it's an interesting question, and. This gets back to a little bit of my commentary earlier about like vice presidents and vice mayors and vice governors is number one, only 74 basis points of our player base or of our daily active player base has reached the 101 badge threshold. So it's a relatively small amount of our players that have reached that max boost level. Um, and only 41% of our whales have actually has 101 uh, badges in their wow. in, in their passport. So so badge saturation has not yet become a problem. Um, but I also know that like there's a player that has 300 badges, um, and that player's not a whale. And so the people and this is, gets back to the other insight that like not everybody plays the game for the same reasons in the same way. But um, but the, but the challenge, if you make it lower cost at 101 or whatever the right uh, threshold is, is like okay. Well, how do you make sure that a, the, the 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 badge, the the the, the uh, hierarchy owner, whether it be a a mayor or a governor or a president or you know in another country it's different different names, like how do you make sure we continue to pay them, right? And so because like they don't have any control over someone's 150th badge. So it just it becomes like more of an economic uh, issue around how does that get funded, um, and discounting the badges after a certain threshold uh, kind of throws it off the the game economy. I mean, when we think about a feature, just as I talked about legendary parcel upgrades, or to talk about you know even you know going from six hours to eight hours boost for uh, Explorer Club membership. Um, you know, their game economy implications, you know, and our, our intention here is to be around and, you know, we view virtual rent and your balances as, you know, stewards of those things. And so even though it is a game, we view ourselves as not in that way. And so we want to make sure we can always pay out without ever devaluing. And so we just need to make sure that when we do something like that, that we think about the holistic impact on the economy when we do it. And again, the question is, well, how does it get funded? And so I would say we would probably not do that, but but uh, I, I, I've qualified that with probably and maybe and I don't know <laughs> because you know the conditions on the ground could change where that would make sense for us to do that. But but right now it's not in our plans. 
Hey, you said a word earlier, Manning, that got me pretty excited. In fact, I wrote it down. I don't even remember what you were talking about. That's how excited I was. You said the word decades in reference to how you're viewing this game. And we ask you so many questions about short-term goals and plans and stuff like that that, that really look at, give us a vision into, into the near future. What does that long-term goal look like for Atlas Earth? Because that's what gets me excited. I like hearing that you guys are going to be around for decades and that you're even mentioning that. I'm actually going to throw this community question a screenshot here too from not Chloe Clark that was somewhat similar. Go ahead, Manning. Got it. Um, I mean, we are definitely, I mean, when you think about the vision for what it is that we want to do, which is to create kind of this virtual world on top of the real world, where it's the intersection of, you know, kind of media, entertainment, experience, commerce, um, in a world that, that again, sits on top of the, re the real world, that gives players the sense of competition the sense of winning and the sense of, of success like that that's really the framing of everything that we do uh, you know and so in order to make sure that we've achieved that vision not only is there a lot of work to do but we need to have a view about how would we guide people through an experience that that can be that long but you know i, I come from the loyalty world and you look at people you know, I spent a lot of time in my career working with United Mileage Plus and their their loyalty program, um, and a few other airline and hotel programs as well. But um, you know, they have customers that have been around for decades, and they've you know, you know, million mile kind of people and one K people and global service people, and and these aren't just people that travel a lot short term. These are people who have been traveling with United Airlines for forever. And that's how we're thinking about the game is like, how do we make sure that the currency itself is attractive, the value proposition is attractive, the game uh, and the things that we do in this virtual world sitting on top of the real world is, is attractive. And, and that's what guides us. You know, sure, we've got short term tactical things and we're going to enjoy delivering, you know, challenges and premium awards to our players. But we're thinking about, you know, how do we build a stock trading thing where you can earn a B, you know, on commission for every trade that you make and you keep we keep money in the ecosystem and that money compounds and you have more ownership and all of those types of things. And, you know, you know, what does a E look like on a you know, another planet, <laughs> you know, those are the types of things that we think about. Now, is that on a roadmap right now? Can I tell you what that feature is going to look like? No, but that's the thing when we think about product uh, and business, uh, that, that's, that's our guiding light. And yeah, we are, we're not looking to, to do this thing for the next couple of years and then go, go move on to something else. How do you guys view where you're at as a company from your perspective? Do you feel like you're still kind of in that beginning phases that we just I haven't even even begun to reach what we're going to see? Uh, if that makes any I sense. Mean, yes. <laughs> yes, we do. I mean, uh, Sami and Bo started this company in 2018, so it's not, you know, they've been, they've been at it for a while. I've just joined right. the team a year ago, and, you know, I would say if you look at the average tenure of our team, you know, there's, there's probably two-ish years would be the median tenure. Um, so we are, I would say we're just starting to hit our stride as far as understanding how to go to market, understanding the customer acquisition engine, which is a big part of game, you know, right. uh, you know, I would say that is a strength of ours. Um, and then, you know, making sure that we keep people engaged in the game. That's the retention part of things. Um, I think I, I would say we haven't, though we have best in class retention in our, in the game itself. If you look at comps and, and other uh, games out there, uh, you know, I would say we haven't really even scratched the surface there. I th it will be fascinating, actually, to see what happens with respect to um, challenges and premium awards because we think that's having a pretty big engagement and retention benefit um, for us for that. So, you know, I would say, like, we're just getting started. I mean, it's a ton of fun. You know, I love what I do. I know the team loves what they do. We love the feedback that we get from you guys. Even sometimes, you know, it's hard to hear. Um, we're very motivated to, to do this. And, yeah, we just feel like we're getting started. Can't wait to see that Atlas Earth credit card, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been bugging you about that for a while. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, I, that, I'm, uh, well, you know, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing that too. But uh, I did want to get to the community Q&A now, if that's okay with everyone. 
Uh, we have a few questions. I've already gone through two of them. Already. Oh, midnight. Are you okay? Yeah. No. Everything good. Okay. I'm just ready. just double checking because I saw your mic go up there for a second. Um. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just go through some of these questions. I I picked uh five or six of the best ones. Uh, over here, not counting the two that I have already displayed from not Chloe Clark and Christopher McCarran. Thank you very much. I will start over here with Tactrix. Uh, his question, are there any plans on making the land customizable in terms of after they implement building on it? And if so, how far into the future would something like this be? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, I would say um, we need to get through next year. Okay. But you will see you will see things that very clearly be building on top of legendary parcel upgrades that are building towards that. So it will not feel like a hey, they said they were going to do this, and and I'm not sure when they're ever going to do it. It, it will feel very like uh, it's designed to feel like a very logical progression. We had several uh, questions regarding uh, the conversion of diamonds to atlas bucks or uses for diamonds in the future do you want to go ahead and put those rumors to rest right now regarding diamonds who have not watched mr everything's video <laughs> with the most awkward pause after i just said no <laughs> <laughs> yes right <laughs> we have no plans for that uh yeah, I mean, diamonds are what they are. They're designed, honestly, to get you off the couch. Um, and it's a mechanism also to, uh, you know, to, to spin the wheel. Like, you're going to see the wheel have more interesting, you know, things on it. But, you know, diamond, you know, and, and it's pretty simple. Like, we manage two currencies. We manage the Atlas Bucks and we manage virtual rent. We don't want to manage a third currency. So um, it just makes economy balancing too complex and the arbitrage between all of these things just becomes a thing we have no desire to manage. So, no. There we go. All right. So Flapper Plays Edits uh, asks, can you bring up the... Oh, okay, Axe asked me um, if you could bring up... The, if I could bring up the idea of making a list of everyone uh, that had been referred and signed up for Atlas Earth, like a referral list that several other rewards apps has i mean i guess i would have to understand why maybe um, i'm just not getting it. okay um basically i think what he's referring to is like um if you go to the to like a ref, you could go to like a referral screen and we'll show a list of all your referrals that you've had oh that was oh, got yeah. it and, and, and maybe like a status of like did they hit a hundred atlas bucks yet or, you know did they get their 10th land so yeah. you could see like a queue if I send out 10 referrals, right. um, seven of them have done their thing and two of them are making progress, but they haven't yet reached the payout. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, like referrals for us are, are not a huge source of growth, which is very different than what I actually experienced at, at Acorns. For example, Acorns, it was a meaningful source of, of new customer volume for us. It, it really hasn't. I think, I think we have to unlock some other game mechanics in order to make that make more sense. And then if that were the case, if referrals were a meaningful source of volume, that we would probably want to create that experience because um, that can be motivating. But right now, it's just not. Um, but 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 that doesn't mean we don't want to unlock referrals. I'm just being honest. We haven't unlocked referrals. All right, Heidi Schalfunt has asked... What advice can you give players right now within the game to prepare us for all the juicy upcoming updates and upgrades that they have planned? Um, join our Discord. That's the best place to get information. Easy. Um, Storm Raven asked, "When will we? When will we be able to see larger area maps?" And I'm assuming this could be a matter of like if ever. I think the I think Storm Raven was referring to like having lines to show clear boundaries between counties yeah. and cities and states. Yeah, I would say the um, the web is going to be the place for that, and uh, we're you, that's not far away. Like and not far away, as in like it's definitely going to happen before Christmas, um, if not sooner than that. Um, where you could see, you know, you you could look look up, you know, just like you know, map UX on the web is pretty well defined. Whether it be you know, kind of Google Earth or or Zillow or you know any of these kinds of things out there. Um, so you would imagine a searchable address, a searchable zip, or not just your own location, where you could go zoom in and look and to see what's going on there, what's the available land, what, like what's on the, you know, who's the mayor of that particular area. 
Um, and, and that will also show boundaries between cities and, and, and counties and, and, and in some cases countries. And so, you know, th- that is absolutely coming. You know, how much of that sits in the mobile app? I don't know. Um, trying to keep that as clean as possible. So, but, but, and then trying to like, we think about the mobile experience versus the web experience. It is, you know, it's a different it's a different user experience, and you know, we're trying to add specific utility to the web versus the mobile experience. And so you'll see that uh, happen on the web, more, most likely. And I don't know if it's only going to be on the web, but it's definitely going to be on the web first. Can't uh, wait. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Madzark23, I think this we might have asked, or at least a similar question like this before, uh, but will Atlas Earth be a standalone project, or will it incorporate other projects into its ecosystem? Well, I only joked about the cash walk part. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly what that means. But <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so basically, like, uh, basically, are you going to be uh, in- integrating? I guess, like, integrating other projects, like other apps that might be related to Atlas Earth, or? Uh, I mean, right now we aren't. You know, the two things that we work on. So, AMP, which is our merchant platform, um, we think about that as a separate product. So the, and the reason why we do that is like, you know, Atlas Earth is a client of AMP, but our vision is to make AMP actually work as uh, an extra earning mechanism for other games where they can you know, de- denominate that in their own currency and get access to those offers. We have IP and technology around that. So, so I would say over the course of time, you will see AMP show up in other games. Um, but uh, but how that crosses back over into Atlas Earth, you know, not exactly sure. I mean, we'd love to to have you know the ability for people to to earn and use uh, Atlas bucks in other games, um, but you know that requires those other games to want that to happen for them. All right, um, Debbie Thomas had actually had a question that was similar to uh, one that we talked about regarding the referrals with. Flapper plays edits, um, except for uh, plots, a list of plots that a player has when they visit a particular town. Is there a, a possible chance that there will be a plot list down the line? Or would this be a little bit too difficult, especially for like those at the up there in the thousands of plots at this point? Thousands of parcels. Yeah, I mean, again, this is like a where do you show that and where in the experience do you show that? That's a great web, you know, kind of this notion of my land. Yeah. Um, view is 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 really great for the web um not so great for the mobile experience yeah the mobile ex- especially with the uh I, I know the leaderboard loads like 25 at a time right yeah that's just a caching thing you know i mean the amount of data that goes back and forth you, right. you know when and one of the things that you guys don't see is the amount of optimizations we're doing for battery life i'm a developer um, i totally get it <laughs> yeah GPS is the most, uh, you know, battery life consuming yeah. thing that you can do. Um, and, and also just rendering all of those tiles and rendering the designs. In some cases, you know, the, the, the icons of the players who owns those parcels, you, you know, you know, <laughs> one of the things that, that, that happened early on is you, know, you go to Las Vegas and you go to the strip or you go to downtown Disney in Orlando and which it's all bought up. But like, oh my gosh, you load that screen and just like, you know, the first couple of times we did it, it crashed the game. And so, you know, we have to do a lot of downscaling and a lot of optimizations to make sure that we can render the experience, um, you know, as quickly and as, as, as coherently as possible. All right. Uh, second to last question, Azura High 7287 asks, um, in mini games, when you and your opponent tie, how is the winner chosen? Is it some kind of coin flip or something else? I think uh, I have the answer to this one, but I'm going to let you answer it. Yeah, so it depends on exactly what the tie is. So there's two types of ties. There's a tie where someone, at least everyone scored, um, where that is based on when the last score happened. Um, and, you know, that's measured to the millisecond. And, and that one's pretty straightforward. The weird tie is when both players are 0-0, zero, zero, and then who wins and who loses and who gets the mulligan, which obviously doesn't happen very often, but happens. And that one is literally a coin flip. But that, is, again, is that's a situation where it's 0-0. Zero, zero. All right. And the final, well, final set of questions, I should say, from Blustery Day 1602. By the way, thank you to everyone in the community who had uh, written up questions. I just could not go through them all, given the time that we had. We had like an hour and a half roughly limit on this one. 
Is there a plan for some time in the future to release previously purchased properties in the event that someone passes away or simply stops playing for whatever reason? And the second question, not following that, it's just a separate question. Can you tell us some of the best positive reactions to Atlas Earth from other players? Hmm. You know, so the inactivity slash deceased player question is something that we're actually working through right now. You know, we've released a, a, a what happens uh, on, on death. Um, it's in our FAQs, um, so go check that out if you want to go read that. But but um, the inactivity question is is one because because we don't know yet exactly how we're going to handle that. Um, you you know what what's important to us is this notion of and we say it in our marketing and 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 we always want to be very consistent is like you own you own this land forever um and the idea of 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 that is very powerful and and we just don't want to ever go back on what it is that we've told people and so we're trying to strike the right balance of a game that's high churn <laughs> parcels that may have been bought a long time ago that that a player never hasn't hasn't engaged in two years and what do you do with that and so uh, we, i don't have a perfect answer for you but we're thinking about it and if we did anything around that we would absolutely communicate it and we would be very clear and we would get people the opportunity to re-engage if we did anything but we're not planning on doing anything right now we're just analyzing it all right and then the second question regarding the yeah. best positive reactions from other players yeah. You know what? I would say <laughs> the best reaction that, that we've gotten is actually something we just recently did, um, which is uh, we did a non-traditional thing, um, which is we made a song and we did a music video for that called Something New, which is, you know, we've, we've, if you've been in the game, we've promoted it, so you've seen it. Um, and uh, if you go to YouTube uh, to our official channel and see it there and it's got right now over 200,000 organic views which is which is pretty great um but if you go search on comments uh not only are there like really great comments and funny things but it's just so overwhelmingly positive which for us you know sometimes you know if you look at our communities it's not always positive um but uh but but just it's really really heartwarming and motivating to our team to see how people care about us and how people see this not only as this rational cashback money thing but it like there's humanity behind this there's fun there's engagement and there's something powerful about kind of being a part of something bigger than just you and that's how we think about the game that's how we think about the community and and you know when we go read those those verbatims uh, in, in the comments and Sami and I are always screen grabbing these you know these things to each other back and forth on texting them to each other and it just it really is very motivating not only to us but the entire team and so so that that keeps us going and you know when mini games crash or we have problems like you know we we revert to those things that, that help keep us motivated on creating something that's around here for a long time and so we just appreciate everybody and we appreciate all the feedback and uh we're excited to continue to, to deliver and make this thing better i i admit this shane by the way um the song has kind of grown on me a little bit <laughs> yeah, it's in, the key, it's in the key of E flat. Uh, if you're interested, um, for those music people, I so three oh, I, E flat major, I assume, right? Actually, E flat minor. Oh, wow! Yeah. I have been out of the I've been out of a piano for a while now. It's super weird. It's a super, and it's 120.6 BPM. So like, which is like super weird. Um, if you're a music person, which we all are at the company. So, um. uh, but, but, but I was wondering, like, uh, there were two other versions of, they had two more songs before that, right? Um, yeah. the, the, there was the pop ish one. And then there was yeah. that, uh, I just bought more land in the metaverse. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming, I'm assuming you like this one, the best yeah. of the three, right? Listen, we 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 like all of our we love all of our children the same. Um, but uh, I would say this one we spent the most energy on, and and you know we do get better. Um, and uh, yeah, we, you know we're gonna this this speaks to who we are and how we think about things, and uh, and so yeah, we're also gonna we're working through getting <clears throat> stems out there and letting people remix it and making it something that people can kind of remix and make their own and make it easy for them to do that and we we have all the oh yay <laughs> the mood dj i could definitely appreciate that one <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> used <stems> a lot. <laughs> All right, so that's so that's it for the Q and A. I do want to have I do have one more thing I want to mention, and uh, so we do this little event um, every February March. It's called Beer Money Mania, and it is a uh, a, a little bit of a voting tournament where we're taking this year it's going to next year actually it'll be next year 2025 will be our second year and we're this time we're going to have a full 64 apps participate in this tournament uh your app is the current defending champions by the way um and we were wondering if you uh if you wanted to participate with like an interview or something down the line you could you could act straight as a COO you can be goofy whatever you want but if you're interested mm -hmm. in something like that, I'm 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 giving you and of course the Atlas Earth app the official invite to join Beer Money Mania next year. I'm sure we'll do it, and you know we'll put our yeah you know, yeah we'll uh you know how many votes did it take to win? I'm just, I, um, you're so, just like, uh, um um okay, so we had about I think the final one was like 150 something votes total, um yeah. but Atlas Earth did not like you got like 80 percent of the vote in. It, you got like 80% of the vote in every single round until the finals. So it was, it, it wasn't even close really. So got it. Um, but the, well, the expectation is things might be a little closer this year because people have a little bit more familiarity now with some of these apps, but we'll see what happens. You're almost certainly going to be a one seed in the tournament. Um, all right. So. We're trying to, we'll try not to get upset by a 16. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah I, I'll definitely, I'll definitely keep you informed on that, and we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely invite you in for when we do the Beer Money Mania selection show for sure. For an is, is, can we can we can we buy votes with with AB? Um, um, I, don't, I don't think we can allow that. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm just, I'm just like, how are we going to make what about sure we diamonds? <laughs> <laughs> Manny, by the way Manny you do have a cash walk you have a diamond walk <laughs> Manning is going the extra Manning is going the extra distance to make sure that Atlas Earth repeats uh, I want 100 repeat champions. We, want to, we want to get 100% of the vote <laughs> this would be like a Russian election um. <laughs> uh, okay so oh uh, uh, I think that is everything Do you, uh, does anyone else have anything else for for uh for manning if you're seeking help with um aesthetics artistry things like that um feel free to let me know okay well i appreciate that very much and thank you for thank you thank you to everybody here and thank you to you pharaoh for for leading this but i, no I, I appreciate i appreciate you know, we're flattered that you guys are this interested and spend this too much time thinking about the thing that, that we do. I mean, it is our job, but I know you guys all have other things in your life and we appreciate that we can occupy even a little, a little piece of that. And, and, uh, you know, it's flattering to us and it's motivating for us. Well, I, I admit since that you came on to the discord, Manny, you really made this whole communications take off and we definitely appreciate you spending your time with us and all the communication you get on you do on the discord it's just great being able to get on there and be able to chat with someone that has a partial ownership in uh, in atlas earth no oh, cool listen i i'm i i love the people that i've met there and and uh you know we, we, we try to you know not always like the most polished there but we just try to be honest about what's going on and what we're trying to do and and we deeply appreciate everybody who um y y you know who plays the game and who wants to, who's who's motivated to uh earn virtual rent um also i do want to mention that even though uh atlas earth is not this entire channel it is a very big portion of this channel um, and I'm sure a lot of people are quite excited to see, uh, to hear from you actually regarding everything regarding Atlas Earth. And it was great to have you here for this interview today. Oh, my pleasure. So I think maybe I should join the, should I join the channel? I mean, I obviously, um, I was uh, thinking that yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you want to join the beer money network, uh, server, I will send you an invite. Definitely. That'd be an uh, honor, you, you can hit, you can hang out with us. And if you want to come by anytime for a round table, it doesn't even have to be beer money mania. If you just want to come by for, um, for some, for just, you know, just to hang out for an hour and talk about other things, non Atlas earth related, that is completely up to you as well. 
Okay, great. Well, I appreciate sure. that. Yeah, I, I'll let you. I'll, I'll let you know if we have any topics coming up. And yeah, definitely w- would not mind uh, hanging out with you. And plus, I myself personally am loving to pick your brain, your ideas, because honestly, you're. You, I'm I'm still amazed at what you do. By the way, <laughs> well, it'll be a pleasure to talk to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so I have left everyone's links, uh, Midnight's, uh, SSC Kelly, and DJ Guardian's links below on the description. DJ Guardian especially has a uh, has a 24-hour uh, marathon for charity going on. Uh, it should be tomorrow as of the time this is published, but if I publish it on Friday right now, <laughs> so just letting you all know that. Uh, yes, uh, it's right Friday. Now. Yes, yeah, so uh, so it's going to be Thursday or Friday that I'm going to have this out. A lot of this is going to depend on you know I'm going to edit some. There's also some layovers I got to do, and this is a much longer uh, this is a much longer one than I had originally anticipated. But uh, that is the video, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a like. Give it a like for Manning. Uh, don't forget to comment as well. Um, I do apologize for those of you that I did not get to questions on. Um, again, we're already a little over an hour and a half as it is. Uh, maybe we'll have them back for a future uh, roundtable. We'll see. Uh, yeah, so don't forget to subscribe to Beer Money Engine. Uh, any final words, everyone? I'm nope. here. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I appreciate you mentioning the charity uh, stream. Mm-hmm. It will be for holiday gifts for military families. And this is where we send out donations to military families that we know are struggling right now. Yeah, and it's a 24-hour stream, everyone. So go check that out. Uh, her link will be at the top. Um, twit, uh, I believe twitch.tv slash DJ guardian in the description. Um, also midnight's Twitch and his YouTube and Wapsie Valley athletics. So with that, everyone, I will see you all next time. This is Pharaoh silver signing out Bye, everyone.